Welcome to another video presentation from Saturn Alliance. My name is Robert Crane and this video will cover using remote web workplace. Help us continue to make material like this available. If you find this video beneficial, we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us improve what we currently provide. All donations, no matter how small, will ensure the continuation and improvement of our offerings. To make a donation, please go to donation.satinalliance.com.au. The target audience for this video are remote users of small business server. What we're trying to achieve here is a remote user being able to access a workstation on a network with a small business server. So what we're looking at is the remote user logging into a web page which connects them to the small business server. From here they then log in to a nominated workstation on the local area network controlled by the small business server. Once this login is successful they effectively set up a secure path between their remote PC and the workstation on the network. This now means that they can work as though they were sitting in front of their workstation even though they are remotely connected to the internet. Prior to accessing remote web workplace we need to complete a number of settings. First thing to remember is that Remote Web Workplace currently doesn't function with Macintosh computers. It also works best with Internet Explorer and the speed at which Remote Web Workplace operates is determined by the slowest internet connection. And the security of Remote Web Workplace is basically only as good as the password you use to gain access. In most cases this will be exactly the same password that you use to access your workstation in the office. So prior to actually using Remote Web Workplace you need to ensure a number of conditions are met. You need to ensure that you've been granted remote access to the network by your system administrator and that the machine that you want to use has also been enabled for remote access. You need to obtain the Remote Web Workplace URL which typically will appear like https www.domain.com forward slash remote. Important thing to note here is, is that the domain will normally always be https and have slash remote at the end. You need to ensure that the workstation you want to access on your local area network is left powered on and preferably logged out. You need to ensure that you know your network login and password because this is basically what you're going to use to log on remotely. So with that in place, the first thing you need to do is power on the workstation at the remote location and ensure you can access the internet normally. You then need to ensure that you know your network login and password because you're going to use that to log into Remote Web Workplace. Open Internet Explorer and add the Remote Web Workplace address that you've recorded into the list of safe sites. Basically you open your browser, go to Tools, Internet Options and you'll be presented with this screen. Select the Security tab and then select Trusted Sites and then select the Sites button. In here you add your Remote Web Workplace web address. Again noting that it'll probably be HTTPS and slash remote. Select add button when complete. The next thing you need to do in your browser is enter the address of your remote web workplace. When this loads for the first time you'll see a warning message but that's normal. The warning message will appear like this warning you that the website security certificate has an issue. In our case we're happy we know that the certificate is issued by our small business server which we trust so we select the option to continue with this website. 
will then be prompted with another security warning. Simply select yes. And we should now be presented with our remote web workplace window. You'll see up the top that the address bar is red and we have something here that denotes a certificate error. The first thing that we need to do is to click on the certificate area error and install the server certificate on our workstation. Once we do this, we'll no longer be prompted with that initial warning screen. To do this, we simply click on the certificate error, then we select the view certificates to commence the installation of the certificate. We then select the install certificate button. And we just follow through the prompts. Here we would just select next to commence the wizard. Select next to automatically select the certificate store and finish to complete the process. We want to install the certificate so we select yes and we'll get confirmation that the certificate has been successfully installed. After the certificate has been installed, we simply log on to Remote Web Workplace using your network login and password. So we simply type in our username as we would at the office and the password that we normally use. Upon this being successfully accepted, we're now presented with a screen that looks like this. I can choose to read my emails, connect to my computer at work, and so on. The option I want to choose is connect to my computer at work. So once I select that option, I'll be presented with a list of computers that I can remotely access. I simply select the one that I want, and then I can go connect. But I also have the, the ability to select optional settings. Once you've made your selections, you simply push the connect button and you'll be connected to that system remotely. If we open up the optional settings, we see we have the ability to log on to the selected computer as a nominated user. We can enable files and folders so that we can transfer files between the remote computer and the computer we're currently operating on. We can also look at modifying it so that we can have local print jobs sent to a printer on our remote machine. And finally, we can select what size of the screen that we want to view. When we've selected all this and the computer that we wish to connect to, we simply hit the connect button. We're now presented with our normal Windows login screen. Again, we enter our username and password as we would on the network, and we'll now be connected to our system as though we're sitting in front of it. The important thing to remember is, is the only information that travels across the internet is the screen and it is encrypted at all points. So therefore, any program installed on your remote computer, you can run and operate through your remote computer once you've logged on to Remote Web Workplace. When you finish your process, it's important to log off the, screen, log off the computer. To do this, simply select Start and Log Off. Again, start and log off. You'll then be returned to the menu which allowed you to make the selection of the computer you connected to. From here, you can select the log off option. And the browser will now display the message that you've been successfully logged out of a remote web workplace. Again, to access it again in the future, we simply open the web browser and put in your remote web workplace address. Since you've installed the certificate, you'll no longer be prompted for the initial security page. When you type it in now, you'll go straight to the login and put your username and password in and access remote web workplace. So in summary, ensure that your remote computer access is correctly configured and you have your login details. Add the remote web workplace site to your list of safe sites. Browse to remote web workplace site and install the certificate on your machine, log into Remote Web Workplace with the network credentials, and then connect to the computer at your office, and then log off when it's complete. Thank you very much for viewing this presentation from Satin Alliance.